Yeah, I'd like to call to order the special council meeting for the Corporation Township of Brunel, Lendock, and Raglan, the 16th day of March, 2022, at approximately 7.03 p.m. Uh, item two, adoption of the agenda. Let the council for the corporation of the township for Brudenell, Lindock, and Dragon adopt the agenda as submitted. Do I have a mover on that? I do. <laughs> Councillor Rutledge, do I have a second there? I can. Councillor Calcott, all in favor of it? Yes. And that's fair. And I will do roll call. Sorry about that. Uh, Councillor Kaufelt here. Councillor Rutledge here. Okay. Disclosure for hearing interest on any of the matters before us tonight. None on my part. None here. None. All right. So the purpose of the meeting tonight, the purpose of this special meeting, is to hear one request for the Premier Rapids and Area Lions Club and to interview candidates for the two War Two Councillor seats. The candidates will be interviewed in alphabetical order by last name. The first order of business is item 4-1, and that's Primer Rapids and Area Lions Club. And the resolution says that the Corporation of the Township of Rudin on Lindock and Ragland yeah. Hereby approve the request from the Primer Rapids and Area Lions Club to sell their summer draw tickets at the Primer Rapids Swing Festival on Saturday, July 23rd, 2022, in the Township of Brunel, Lindock, and Raglan. Do I have a mover on that? I can move. Councillor Kalpa, the second. Second. Councillor Rutledge, uh, any questions of council? No, it's, we've done it. Okay, so I'll call for the vote then. All in favor? Yes. Yes, yes. and that is carried. So we're down to the interview process. The very first uh, applicant we have now for the position of counselor is Nicole Alessandro. And I guess we'll wait for her. Hi, hey Nicole, how are you? I'm good. How are all of you? That's good. Good. So I want to take the time and thank you for uh, taking the time to put your for your name forward in consideration of this seat on council for me. So uh, it'll be a pretty basic interview process. Uh, council will ask you a few questions if they have any, and then if you have any response or some anything else you'd like to say in regards to your answers from your, your questionnaire. Mm -hmm. uh, just we'll go ahead and do that. We'll try and keep it to a 10 to 15 minute okay. um, interview process, but uh, we'll adapt as best we can. Okay. So, um, so council, if you've had time to review the, the, the questions and the answers, do you have any questions in particular for Nicole? No, are you doing this first or? I'm going to do that at the end. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, I just I have a question just with the ward system. Like, do you like the ward system? If so, why? And if not so, why? Um, I've done research on how every um, like Raglan and 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 now we're all separate at one time. I believe it was 2016 and they won. Back in the 90s. Was it the 90s? 2009. 1990. 1990. 1990. Okay. Something else I've read. Um, I think on a whole, the amalgamation was a positive thing, and it can still be a positive thing. Um, due to the vast majority of land mass that is out there, we kind of needed um, all the little townships that were at the time to amalgamate to hopefully bring the communities together to work as, as a whole and maybe um, benefit uh, everybody in the future. So in a, in a way, I, I agree with the, the, the amalgamation. Um, I have 
heard that some people disagree with it. Um, there are, there's pros and cons to everything, but I think on a whole, I think it was a pretty good idea. I think what I'm asking though is the war, the, so war one is Brunella. War yeah. two is right. Yeah. So the way election year is, Rudnell Lindoff only vote for War One. Oh, okay. and so, yeah. and War Two, the taxpayers and Ryan vote for that. Okay. So, um, do you think that should be in place, or do you think that? I, I think it should be a whole election. If we're one township, I think everybody should have a say on who sits at these seats and represents them. Because at the end of the day, that's what council members represent is the taxpayers of the communities. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's. Thank you for answering. Mm -hmm. uh, John, do you have any questions? No, I have no question. Um, I just had one question for you, Nikki. I know I, I looked at your answers to some, you know, all of the questions, and I don't know if you have your answer in regards to, to question five. So the question was, uh, describe to us your future vision 10 years from now of the township, and what would be different from today, if anything? So your answer was, my vision for 10 years from now is to have all policies and procedures in place. Uh, and she, and you, you say that you keep touching on those um, and, and for them that they be effective and efficient. So I'm just wondering, is there, would there be anything else you would see um, as a vision for the township in 10 years? Um, the other vision I have is hopefully to Bring us up to making this a municipal, like a, a huge municipality or a metropolis, but getting up with the times, as in, say, um, better internet service, or maybe small businesses making it more accessible for them to come into the area and you know get our our revenue up a bit and get the tourism and the the locals more involved in things. So that would be another vision I'd have for the next 10 years. Now, is there anything you would like to add to your responses for council? Not really. I okay. think I've done a pretty good job. I need myself a pat on the back for these ones. <laughs> it took me a long time. I, I've been in the works in the process of this for probably two years. I've done my homework, I've done my research. I've learned a lot of my musical laws as well as my provincial laws. Okay. Um, this is something that I'm very passionate about and I put the work in. So I'm sure. Okay. So I have more questions. Uh, we have one more. Um, Kind of a surprise question, I guess we'll say. Okay. Um, now you have in front of you, I believe. So if you want, I'll give you time. I'm gonna I'm gonna read it out loud. Okay. Uh, unless you can read it and then and, and take all and take the time you want to 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 respond appropriately. So the scenario: as a counselor, an angry constituent approaches you about a, a dispute they are having with their neighbor. They do not agree on the property lines and farm animals are trespassing and causing damage. Uh, so, so the answers, of course, are multiple. Would you A, go over to the property in question and meet with both neighbors to come to a mutual agreement to resolve the issue? B, initiate the investigation, get pictures and statements from both neighbors? Uh, C, direct an employee of the township to take care of the situation of soul. Which employee would you direct? And D, none of the above. And please explain your reason. Um, I would actually take points from every single one of these, except for D, of course. Okay. Um, I would go to the property. I would question um, both parties involved. I would also initiate a, an investigation, get pictures and statements, and also any other character witnesses or visual witnesses of um, the animals crossing the property lines or any other damages done. I would do a thorough, in-depth investigation. And if we have an employee that is um, dedicated or, um, I guess, kind of in charge or appointed to do investigations like that, then I would send them out as well as a, a, as a secondary or even ask one of the other council members to 
accompany me or to do their own investigation. Um, I believe there's more than two sides of the story. There's always their side, your side, and the truth. So. Thank you for that. Okay. Does council have any more questions? No, no, my friend. No, no. Thank you very much. Nicole, you, am I allowed so. to ask questions? Yes, you can. Okay. Yes. Okay. I have three questions. Three questions. Um, what would the remaining council members like in the qualities of a candidate to fill the position? Thank you, Councilor well, I, I would like someone to work with, especially uh, that we're not always right. I'm not always right, we're not always right. And that uh, when the final decision is made, the majority wins. And I agree with John. Like, I mean, sitting here as a counselor, it's definitely a learning experience. I'm on my second term and I'm still learning. Oh, yeah. I will always be learning. Um, I think council right now, there's a lot of new for John and I and Sheldon because we're kind of heading in, in a different direction, a better direction, I do believe. And um, it'll be new for us as the other two that are sitting. sitting. Um, where would you guys like to see the township in 10 years? Oh, I'll be too old then. <laughs> I thought it was going to come from John, actually. <laughs> and I'll, I'll answer this one, so it's, okay. I didn't get a chance to answer the first one. But for, okay. for someone, for me, for a, a city council, I think it has to be someone that displays an honesty, integrity, uh, especially as it relates to to code of conduct, uh, you know, conflicts of interest, and someone that's, um, you know, to be a counselor, you kind of have to be, there's give and take. And, and, and sometimes, you know what, you don't always get your way. Um, you know, but a formal council always rules, and that's simply someone people that need to understand that. Right? So, yeah, yeah, as far as 10 years from now, I look at the last eight years or how many <laughs> years on the council, and I look at the changes that have happened. And sometimes that's uh, it's kind of a loaded question, but um, I just like to see municipality for financially stable and, um, you know, grow up to some extent at least to, uh, to help with our, with our costs. So, Okay, the last one. Uh, what do you remaining council members see as the biggest concern in the township presently? Well, well, yeah, as far as the municipality, I agree with Mayor's answer on those, but the big thing is to try to maintain some sort of a uh, balanced budget where our seniors are not paying tax to debt. And that's really difficult with the escalating cost of stuff uh, to, to try to keep a, a fair budget. And it's a big concern right now, especially with the way it's been done. Big difference. There's there are always challenges now. Yeah. And I don't think that's going to change. Oh no, oh, no. for any council, right? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Do I just stay out there, right? Like I'm going here? That's right. Sure. Okay, so our next applicant is uh, Wayne Banks. <laughs> um, so I'd just like to first thank you, Wayne, for uh, considering the position of council. And, uh, we wish you well here. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, basically, what we'll do is um, council has such, had a chance to review your answers to your questions, to the questions. And uh, so, first, I'm going to ask them if they have any questions in regards to your answers. Um, so this council. So I do have a question. Yeah. <laughs> so which do you, one? Do you like the ward system? And if so, why? And if not so, why? I like the ward system. Uh, I mean, you know, it keeps us kind of separated. 
But what I'd like to see is people can vote in both wards for each councillor. Because, you know, I might find somebody I really like and should get in in ward, ward one, so I should be able to vote for that, for that one, even though, you know, even though I don't, I don't live in it. So, because I mean, the first thing you got to think about is, is the township. And that's, when I was on council, that's what I always thought about, was the township first. Is it good for the township? You know, not just is it good for ward two because I live in ward two. Mm -hmm. you know. So that's the way I look at it. Yes, I like the ward system, but we should be able to vote in each ward. Uh, John, do you have any questions? No, I have none. So, um, so I have a couple questions for you. It's for you, Lane. Uh, so the, very, the the question number two uh, was that it's less than one year until the next municipal election. What do you believe is important to council to establish in that time? And I know you give a, a reference to a couple of roads that weren't completed. Yeah. Uh, my simple question is, um, is there anything else uh, within this remaining term of council that you that you may consider as a priority? As a priority? Yeah. I really can't think of anything. Okay. Really. Um, uh, so, so let me put it, I guess, in another sense. What would you believe may be something else that may benefit the municipality between here and fall? What could we do? Uh, I don't know, like more, uh, if we go for more grants or whatever, okay. uh, you know, like, because when I'm well, there again, I don't always want to say when I was on the council. Yeah. You know, we always went for the best grants that we could get and the ones that we know we, we, we could get. Like, why go for something that we're not going to get, you know, it's just a waste of staff's time to go through a lot of stuff that we know we're, that we're not eligible for. So, thanks. Uh, my second question is in regards to question six. Um, and actually, uh, there was not an answer for it. So I'll read the question to you. Uh, six was explain what you believe is the most important ethical value a member of council should consistently demonstrate. And um, I guess what would your reply be? Fairness and doing the best they can for the tension. And honesty. So we have one more question for you that wasn't as part of the question. So I, I believe it's in front of you. Um, um, to you Frank. Uh, I will read it out loud also. Okay. okay. Um, so scenario. Okay. As a counselor, an angry constituent approaches you about the dispute they're having with their neighbor. They do not agree on the property lines and farm animals are trespassing causing damage. Would you, A, go to the property in question and meet with both neighbors to come to a mutual agreement to resolve the issue? B, initiate an investigation, get pictures and statements from both neighbors? C, direct an employee of the township to take care of the situation and if so, 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 which employee would you direct? Or D, none of the above, and please explain your reason. Uh, I would initiate, B, well, B, in, initiate an investigation, get pictures and statements from both neighbors. Because uh, at least you can say, okay, the animals are trespassing, or no, no, they're not. Do you know exactly where your property line is? And if the guy says no, well, how do you know the animals are trespassing? Then how do you know? You know, you have to know these things before you go pointing fingers at somebody. And uh, like I like you say, get statements both. Like when did it take place? You know. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, times, and basically your dates. Okay. Um, does council have any more questions? None on my part. Do you have no. any? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay, John. Uh, no, I have nothing on my end. Okay. Uh, do you have any other questions or wish to expand on any answers to your questions? Yes. 
No one on really anything I wrote is what he was really thinking. Uh, yeah. That's about it. Okay. Thank you very much, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I wish all my interviews were like that. <laughs> A mess. Melody? 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 Sorry. Oh, that's okay. I did a bad car accident, so. And I broke the back and broke the sternum still, so. It's only been five weeks. Oh. Yeah, so my parents just brought me home, so I've been in down in the by Hamilton for most of the day. We're getting there slowly. Okay, so uh, so our next applicant is is Melody Booger. Uh, I will thank you for taking the time to put your name forward in consideration of a seat on council. So yeah, welcome. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to invite council to ask any questions of you of your responses to your questions. Okay. Um, and to uh, if they have any questions of you at first, we'll try to keep it ten to fifteen minutes if possible. Um, so yeah. Uh, do you have, does council have any questions in front of you? No, I, I do not have any questions. Mm -hmm. okay. I do, just uh, concerning the ward system, and you're aware that our municipality has a ward system. Yes, and it's a ward one and a ward two. So, or how do you feel about the ward system? It's, uh, it's, per it's perfectly fine because it does help to, to be able to represent only your ward, which is easier. To bring forward what your people in your ward are asking of you than to be over the whole place because it's a lot harder to control everybody if you're not in little wards because each ward has a responsibility which is easier to bring forward to the table and to be able to reach your people easier than having a bigger fast area to, to cover okay so you're in favor of the wards yes definitely in, definitely in favor of the wards So any other questions? Okay. okay, so I just have a, a, two questions for you, Melody. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it refers to your answer to question number one. I don't okay. know, did you bring your answers with you or? Yeah, well, everybody thought it was crazy. <laughs> I brought my answers with me. They're asking me, why did you bring your file? Yeah. You never know. You never know. Yeah. And, and I'll just read and refer okay. to what yeah. the question was. Yeah. Um, so your your answer to question one so it's, it's uh the question was tell us what you know about the role of council and good effective governments and uh, part of your answer was your answer refers to uphold and promote the purposes of the municipality and to act in the best interests of the municipality so my question is to, is to you um what do councils adopt um to ensure good government governance what, do, what, what, are, what, are, what is that council's disposal to make sure that they act in good governance? Well, you have, you have to have your policies and procedures in place that's done by your municipality and everybody votes on what you're doing for a new policy. Okay. You have to make sure that you follow them and you have to be fair and impartial on anything that you make a decision on. And you have to have a majority vote to, to pass any policies or procedures as you're going forward. Okay, um, my second question was in regards to uh, question six. Um, 
the, the, the question is explain what you believe is the most important ethical value a member of council should consistently demonstrate. So I guess my question to you is what do council members sign or refer to when they take the oath of office? When you sign the field of office is what you're going to be fair and impartial at all times. You're going to represent the whole community, not just yourself as an individual. You want to make sure that we're bringing back, bringing forward the best interest of everybody that's in the whole municipality or township, whichever you're doing, so that everybody has a voice, not just my voice, but their voice is referred through me, and that they understand that this is what we're looking at to do, and you make sure that everybody likes the ideas that we're bringing forward. Uh, does council have any more questions? No. Okay, so we have one um, other question for you, and it's believed it's right there on the okay. right hand side. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll read it. So, as a councillor, an anger constituent approaches you about a dispute they're having with their neighbor. They do not agree on the property lines, the farm animals, or trespassing, causing damage. Uh, would you A, go over to the property in question and meet with both neighbors to come to mutual agreement? Resolve the issue. Initiate an investigation, get pictures and statements from both neighbors. Direct an employee of the township to take care of the situation. If so, which employee would you direct? Or D, none of the above? None of the above. And please explain your reason. Um, I would go with, I would go initiate the investigation of what they're saying. Then I would get pictures and statements from both neighbors. Then I would bring them to the council to say to somebody, I don't know who we would do with the council yet, bring them to everybody and have them look at it and see if they're making the right decision and going forward. Because I know that this happens in quite a lot of situations where animals do cross people's property lines and they're saying, well, that's not my property, that's your property. But then you have to come to a fair and understanding agreement that, hey, we're gonna look at this from all angles. We'll come back with a resolution. And then hopefully when the resolution comes back that they accept what you're bringing back to them as not just as me but as everybody who is involved in the situation okay. uh, does council have any questions in regard to the answer uh, do you have any questions for council no i think it's I, i'm new to here so i'm kind of biased to everything right now i don't have a side on anything and sure. i just know that I'm just new and I want to get involved with the community because I'm going to be living here the rest of my life now. So okay. I'm a permanent resident. So I wanted to make this place that everybody has a voice to be heard and understand that they can come to anybody and get try to get some answers or get some solutions to problems solved. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Nice. Nice. Thanks. Nice. Nice. Thanks. No more sweating. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank, yeah, you. thank you. You can remove it when you sit down. Okay, so our next applicant is Ronnie Butrick. Hello, Ron. <laughs> nice to meet you, Bob. Okay, so um, council basically has had a chance to look at the questions and your answers. Mm -hmm. um, so what I will ask of uh, council uh, if they have any questions uh, to your responses, and uh, you know. Uh, we'll go from there. So we'll try to keep it from 10 to 15. And it looks like we're having a problem with that. So uh, does council have any questions of Ron and the answers to this question? So yes, Ron, I do have a question. So do you like the ward system? If so, why? If not so, why? Nobody's living in that war. I don't like it because they're killing too many innocent people over there. Yeah. No, the board system. Board. Sorry, <laughs> I agree with you there. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, I think it's a good idea. You know, like you understand what I mean. The, there's war one, war two, and I already just tell it. Yeah. Because yeah. that way you get representatives from each area. Like what I might know in my area, 
the other person, I might not know what the mirror is, and that way you got more input from everybody kind of able to come together, hopefully and get a good answer to bring and you know don't say well that's no good. Try to get together and make it work. So you're in favor of that? I'm in favor of it. Okay. Uh, John, do you have any questions? No, I don't know. Uh, I just had one question for you, Ronnie, it, uh, and it referred to to question number two. Okay, so the question was, so would we have less than one year to the next municipal election? What we believe is important for council to establish in that time. And in your answer, you said, part of your answer said to get the township back on track. Could I ask you to um, evolve on that a little bit? Right. Also, what would be your view? Well, my view, being watching what has been going on for the last year or two, and there's been a lot of conflict going on, and that has to come to an end kind of deal. You can't go ahead when one person steps ahead and two steps back. And to me, it's work together for it to make things go a lot smoother. I know people are going to disagree on certain things, but as a group, if you work together, if we proceed, go ahead, and it should go smooth. And this bickering going back and forth gets you nowhere other than just wasting money and wasting time. But I think if we can get past that problem, work, as a group, uh, so we have one more. Uh, it's a bit of a one more question of you. It wasn't in the, the, the questions that were given to you, it's right there in front of you on the desk. So I'll read it out. Uh, so this scenario is as a councillor, an angry constituent, constituent approaches you about a dispute they're having with their neighbor. They do not agree on the property lines and farm animals are trespassing and causing damage. Would you, A, go over the property in question and meet with both neighbors to come to a mutual agreement to resolve the issue? B, initiate an investigation, get pictures and statements from both neighbors. C, direct an employee of the township to take care of the situation. If so, which employee would you direct? Or D, none of the above. Please explain your reasoning. Uh, well, that could be answered in a couple ways. Being the way I would kind of look at it, I mean, I wouldn't know first of all where the property line would be. Uh, so I wouldn't be solving anything by going there. Uh, to me, nobody really does it to other than if they can't get along, then they, I think it's up to them to maybe get a surveyor in and try and sort it out. Because I know. Just in past experience with property lines where people thought they were and they weren't there. And the only way you got it solved is that somebody with a registered surveyor walks in and then they got some put back. You could talk to them. Maybe they would come to the green and say, okay, we'll split this and go here, but that still does not tell you where the property line is. And, and that has nothing to do with. Really, in my books, council to solve that. They have to go and get a survey and get it done, and then there's no argument going over the line. Yeah, any questions for council? Uh, not really. I I didn't know what to do, kind of deal. I talked to the round for a while and then I thought, you oh, know, I'm retired here. I paid taxes all my life and enjoy the area. And maybe I could do some good with the township and come up with some suggestions. I do have some ability with machinery to know what goes on. I and mean, we have a lot of those in our township. It might be good input there. And it's just talk to you more, other like the people that are in. Like in the a council spot, I know you can't just jump in there and say, Well, I know everything. <laughs> well, definitely, it's a learning experience. And like it was a six month 
thing and it gives you a little bit of a feel to if you want to pursue it maybe you really like it and if it uh, comes up you put your name in the ballot and hopefully the people will like it and uh, that gives them a chance to see if you're any good or not or you're just there for the yeah mm -hmm. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. Thank you. At first, I hope she's got a lot of experience. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pay to say that? Did you pay to say that? No. Remember, you're lying, but I'm going to say you. Just like to thank you for taking the time um, to put your name forward, forward for consideration of the seat on council. Um, so, what uh, council has had time to review your, the, the questions and your answers? So, basically, we'll start off with if, if council has any questions um, of your replies, uh, we'll start with that first. Uh, we'll try to keep it 10 to 15 minutes. We have no trouble with that. So, I think we move along pretty quick here. So, I will ask council if they have any questions on Valerie. And I do, and you probably kind of answered it in your questionnaire here, but my question is, do you like the board system? And if so, why? And if not so, why? I think the board system was created to still us and them, where if you have it's all one municipality and everybody represents everybody. I think you have more of a another group. That's my thinking. So, because I'm you're not in favor of the board system. Um, I think we could move from the board system. Because we still have the boundaries like of the old municipalities, we have two representatives and two representatives, so it's still kind of the division. Okay. Uh, John, you have any questions? No. no. Um, I just have one question for you, Valerie, and it ref refers to uh, your answer to question number two. So uh, the, the question is, there is less than a year until the next municipal election, and it says, what thing do you believe is important for a to establish in that time. Uh, so part of your answer says also a realistic 10-year capital plan needs to be adopted and followed. Um, my question is for you, is how do you believe this would help the municipality going forward? Well, I think for one thing, um, you would be looking at your roads in particular like your roads department and looking at roads that need to be done and uh, scheduling them in and the same with your equipment. So you don't end up in a scenario where you have a piece of equipment that you're, you know, patching and patching to keep it going because you can't afford to get a new one. And if you do get a new one, you got two months falling apart. So I, I really think that's something that needs to be looked at and, and followed. Um, okay, so we have one more question for you that was as part of the, the uh, part of the questions that were given to you, and it's in front of you there at the meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll read it to you. Um, as a counselor, an angry constituent approaches you about a dispute they're having with their neighbor. They do not agree on the property lines and farm animals are trespassing, causing damage. Would you a or the property question to meet both neighbors come to a mutual agreement to resolve the issue? B, initiate an investigation, get pictures and statements from both neighbors. C, direct employee of the township to take care of the situation if so 
which employee would you direct and our dean number the above? Please explain your reasoning. Um, I think I would probably perhaps go to the property um, and meet with both the neighbors, but not to work out an agreement to find out what the facts are. And then I think it's something that would have to be brought to council and probably with the scenario like that, the line Spence Act would come in to act and the pensioners would have to go out and probably do a ruling if they couldn't come to an agreement. But I think um, the agreement should be worked through township staff, not through a member of council. Council have any more questions? No, do you have any questions of council? No? no. Okay. Thank you, Ian. Okay. Thanks, Sure. Well, still here. Comfortable chairs. So our next applicant uh, is Shane Musgrove. I would like to thank you, Shane, for putting your name forward, uh, taking the time uh, and consideration of the seat for seat on the council. So, so we'll try to keep the interview to 10 to 15. We're having a problem with that, so we'll mm -hmm. it won't take too long. So councils have a chance to review your questions. And what we'll do first is we will um, ask council if they have any questions of you and, and, and get your answers. And then if you'd like to explain a little more on your answers and maybe the council, uh, we'll definitely have time for that. Uh, any questions from council? I have a question. Yes. My question, Shane, is do you like board system? And if so, why? And if not so, why? Board system. Well, to me, we're all amalgamated anyways, as one township. So it, to me, it shouldn't really matter which word you're in, as long as you represent the taxpayer that they need to represent. Well, not in favor. That's my question. That's your question. Okay. Yeah. Uh, John, do you have any questions? Uh, no. None? No. Okay. Um, I just had a, a couple a couple questions for you, Shane. Um, one uh, was in relation to question number five. Uh, did you bring your answer? Here? No, I didn't. Okay, okay. well, that's fine. I'll, 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 read, I'll read the question for you and, um, and part of your answer. So question five was, describe to us your future vision 10 years from now of the township. What will be different from today, if anything? And your answer was to, re well, to regain trust and transparency and build community involvements and basically use um, the facilities that we have, the arena, the beaches, et cetera. Um, is there anything else that you can see as part of the vision for council 10 years or what? Well, it, it's hard to vision 10 years from now, the way things have been going. If we take the coronavirus, that kind of shut everything down. And um, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a, to me it's hard to it's hard to look that far in the future. Sure. It's months months at a time is what I would be looking at. Because yeah. any farther than that, things can change so quick you don't know. You have no control over it sometimes. Right. So just a vision for me would be months, not years. Um, 
my other question is in regards to question number one. And it says, tell us what you know about the role of council and the good governance and, and governance. Um, what do you believe, what can council do or what, what, what are they empowered about to implement that ensures good governance? So what do you believe are the powers or, or what can council do? What methods, of, what, what powers does council have to ensure good governance? I'll just think about it. Yeah. I mean, to, for a municipality to have governance, they usually need something to guide them by. What do you feel that? Well, the if, if there is ever certain events that come up, even going by the, the rate payers, with the taxpayers, they're back, like a, asking them for advice on certain things as well. Um, so there's one more question. It wasn't on as part of the uh, questions itself. So it's right in front of you, I believe. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll read this and then you can reply to it. Okay. So the scenario is, as a councillor, an angry constituent approaches you about a dispute they're having with their neighbor. They do not agree on the property lines, the farm animals are trespassing, causing damage. Would you A, go over to the property in question and meet with both neighbors and come to mutual agreement to resolve the issue? B, initiate an investigation of pictures and statements from local neighbors? C, direct an employee of the township to take care of the situation? If so, which employee would you direct? Or D, none of the above? Please explain your reasoning. Well, it all kind of depends if it's on a uh, it depends the line, the line itself would depend if it's, if it's on a concession line or not being on a concession line on the town mean is the township should step in a bit but if it's not if it's just a line between two properties, I probably A, would you go over and meet with them and try and solve an issue? And if that escalates and if nobody can seem to figure anything out, I think then it's invest, you get investigation into it and probably a survey. Would be the best bet. Then it kind of knows exactly where the line is. I don't think it'd be up to an employee of the township to go and solve that if it's not like on a concession line. It's just, just a normal line, then yes, it's up to the landowner to figure it out themselves. Does council have any more questions for Shane? Yeah, I have one of them is slide number five there. Uh, you live in the great areas, and you have an amazing area, beautiful parks and beaches, and they're not really utilizing them. How, how are you going to pick up the beaches? And I know what COVID can be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I mean, the beaches are there forever. It's up to people yeah, to go yes. to use them. So, how do you get to use them more? <clears throat> like the building in change rooms happen. Yes. Or they're doing other things to make them playgrounds for the kids. Mm, that, so, that's that's one thing <clears throat> that, the, like, like I noticed that the government did. Yeah. There is a nice little little attraction there for kids and stuff. That uh, and even maybe some signage, like because you take it, some of the beaches are off the beaten path. You take people that aren't from the area, they're going through, they want to stop move from picnic at the beach or whatever. If you have some signage, the public beach, they're great right out right off the like at the red room on over here off the highway, put a sign up, public beach. Even at Cargus Cargus Lake Road there. Of the beach, like a sign or something. That way, people will, even if they're not from the area, they do have an idea where it is. Okay, thank you. 
So Shane, what, what made you decide to run for council? Well, I have been getting in on the public for the last couple of years. And again, now I'm getting older and a more interested in how things work around here. And being that there would be a four year term if I ever did run, what if I didn't like So I just thought this would be the perfect opportunity to come and try. It's only going to be to fall anyway. If I don't like it, I have the option to go out. So I just thought it would be a perfect opportunity to try. Okay. Do you have any questions? Oh, no, not really. No. Okay. I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. I wasn't very prepared. I was busy all day. So. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine what you're doing this time of year. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for coming in. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Mr. Rutledge. How are you? Mr. Driller. How are you? So our, our final applicant tonight for the position of counselor is Stefan. I'm gonna say voice long. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I looked at that and I said I don't get this right pronunciation. So yeah, no, I'd like to thank you. First of all, thank you for taking the time to put the name forward in consideration of the senior council. So it's, it's great. So, thank you, Julie. Yeah, so council has reviewed, reviewed your, your the questions and your answers to the questions. Okay. So basically what we'll do tonight is if, if council has any questions of you, we'll start with that okay. and we'll go from there. So uh, any questions of council? So my question, Stefan, is do you like the ward system? And if so, why? Do I like, so. Sorry, say the ward the system. Ward system. Yeah, okay. Do I like the ward system? Um, I think it's it's a good, sufficient way of uh, the municipality working the way it's structured. Um, I don't see any need at this point, or unless council has different uh, opinions, to um, look at changing it. So you're in favor of the board. I am in favor of okay. the board system. Thank yeah. you. John, do you have any questions? Uh, no. No. Okay. So I just had a couple of questions for you in regards to your answers. Okay. Uh, so the first uh, question is in regards uh, to question number two. So, uh, so it says it's been less than a year until the next municipal election. What do you believe is important for council to establish in, in that time? So your answer, part of your answer was council to complete any and all outstanding agenda items prior to the next municipal election. Could you expand on that? Well, um, yeah, sure, I can expand on it, John. Yeah. Um, I don't know all the agenda items that were presented in front of council over the whole year. I didn't watch all the YouTube videos. So um, I, I would, obviously, if I got chosen for council, I would review the previous minutes of all the meetings, and then I would take a look at what is uh, a major, major issue that would need to be possibly looked at as a group and presented. Uh, if motions are needed to be put forward, put a motion forward and see where, where the, the subject matters are, what they're pertaining to, um, and how they affect the constituents within our writing. Sure. Okay. My other question was uh, referred to, to question five. Mm -hmm. So the question says, please. Okay, so yeah, describe to us your future vision 10 years from now in the township. What would be different from today, if anything? So part of your answer, uh, it says that to maintain infrastructure that is presently working, enhance and develop infrastructure that will improve the township if necessary. So to your knowledge, um, how, how does municipalities 
address infrastructure improvements? Like, what do they go by to address infrastructure improvements? Um, from my recollection, um, I believe it's um, from the complaints or issues that are brought up from constituents regarding roads, um, ditches, um, community center, whatever it might be. Uh, we as a council review, we look at the financial feasibility, if it's in the plan of what the council is looking to put forward. Um, and if it meets all the criteria, then we put a resolution together and we put a vote and a motion. Just to, I can move, just yeah. to let you know, I'm also the president of the Peterson Path Runner Stone Pit Club. Okay. Okay. I was voted in in May. Yeah. Um, Nolan stepped down. So I am aware of how um, a government sure. structure is worked and how the committee chair meetings yeah. and so forth. Okay. 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 That's kind of the background. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, I have one more question for you, and it's a question that wasn't as part of the, the questionnaire, but it's in front of you, I believe, also. Sure. So, and it's a scenario. Mm -hmm. So, as a councillor, an angry constituent approaches you about a dispute they're having with their neighbor. They do not agree on the property lines and farm animals or trespassing causing damage. Would you, A, go over to the property in question and meet with both neighbors to come to a mutual agreement to resolve the issue? B, initiate an investigation, get pictures and statements from both neighbors. C, direct an employee of the township to take care of the situation. If so, which employee would you direct? Or D, none of the above, but please explain your reason. Um, first of all, I would do A, I would meet with the two cons constituents and find out what their issue is completely. Um, if there's no resolution to be come to at that point, then obviously in a full investigation to be initiated. Um, and then once that investigation has been brought back to council, um, then uh, instruct with council the appropriate individuals or municipality people to take care of whatever would need to be done to be rectified. Does council have any more questions as to that? No, I, I don't. No? Okay. Do you have any questions of council? Uh, no. No? No, okay. I really don't. <laughs> okay. John, no, no, just a few, I guess, John, where do you live? So I live on Bobo uh, Road. Okay. And Sheldon? Me, I live on uh, Hard Lake Area, Burst Road. Okay. Burst and Keller Road. So. And yeah. Ms. Redlow? Miss Wu? Uh, your last name is, is Kyle. Kyle. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> My apology. I live on Quadro Road also. On Quadro Road, Road, okay. <laughs> and I should I should apologize too because you know what? Something I never did tonight because maybe sometimes I take advantage of people know everybody, but I didn't introduce everybody to counselors. So my apologies. No problem, Kevin. That's fine. <laughs> um, just to let everybody know, I live at Andrew River Road. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay. Well, thanks a lot, Sam. Yeah, uh, sure. sure. I think you're the last one, so probably don't lose that anyway. Okay. I step outside. Yeah. Thank yeah. You very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Governor. Okay. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, basically what, what we're gonna do for those, those listening is we're gonna give council time to sit here and deliberate their decision before we go to the voting, uh, probably maybe 10 minutes or so or whatever time council needs to decide, so. Yeah. So we go to the close or we stay open. We're staying open.
So we got something this slightly more than this one push it out. So I'm not sure what I'm so I can feel it already. Yep, maybe. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll miss it. Okay. So I believe the clerk will be leading the recording. So All right, the interview process is now over. Council has a vote. I guess we should bring everybody in. Yes, I was going to say <laughs> we probably should leave the chairs on. They want to sit in the chair. You know. 
Right, so the interview process is now over, and council has a, had a chance to deliberate. We've asked council if they're prepared to make your decision, but I believe Iris had some council pop up had something she wanted to say. I did. <clears throat> it, it's just that makes it tough because we everybody knows everybody, right? So I just want to thank everyone for submitting an application and showing interest on the vacancy of the two council seats. And I was impressed with everyone's answers to the questions on, on your application form. And I would like to encourage all of you to run in the election this fall, which is only seven months away. This was a very difficult decision for me. And I would like to explain why. And that is why I asked a question concerning the board system. Um, this municipality has the board system in place. Ward one representing Brunel Lindock and Ward two representing Raglan. Whether we agree or disagree with the ward system, the fact is it is in place. So the two vacant council seats are from Ward 2. And I feel it is my obligation to fill those two seats with candidates from that ward. If an individual chooses to run in a different ward come election time and they get elected, at least that was a decision made by Ward 2 taxpayers. So that's pretty well all I have to say on that. <laughs> all right, Council, are you prepared to make your decision? Well, yeah, okay. I'd just like to say something to you. I'm going to leave it for the end. I'm going to do it now. I, I too would like to thank all of you for bringing your name forward for Council. Um, you know, I, I, I'm probably like Iris. I hope that, you know, if, you, if, we, if we don't choose any of you tonight, you know, you know, consider running in the next election if you so wish. There are many resources available out there, such as through the Inter Association of Scholars of Ontario, that give you uh, a bit of a taste and, and, and what it, you know, what it takes to be a counselor or what your obligations are. So if you do, you know, do consider that um, in the future, but there are good avenues out there for you to look at. All right, we're going to proceed with the vote. Councillors, who is your first? This is just a, a verbal vote so everybody's aware, okay? Uh, Councillors, who is your first choice for Councillor Ward 2, seat 1? Councillor Coppell? Shane Muscle. Councillor Rutledge? Uh, Valerie Owen. Mayor Keller? No, Valerie Owen. Majority of votes in favor of Valerie Owen, and the resolution will be passed on item 4.11. Council, are you prepared to vote for Councillor Ward 2, seat 2? Yes. 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 Who is your first choice for Councillor of Ward 2, seat 2? Councillor Coffell? Wayne Banks. Councillor Rutledge? Wayne Banks. Mayor Keller? Ronnie Booter. Majority of votes in favor of Wayne Banks, and a resolution will be passed on item 4.12. So can I say one more thing, please? So concerning Valerie, you are a retired clerk treasurer and having you at this table with all your municipal experience would be such a big asset to us. As acting clerk treasurer for the past year for this municipality, I have to commend you for leading this council through some very trying times. And I thank you greatly for that. If I could give up my seat and give it to you, I would. But I just, like I stated before, I feel obligated to fill those seats with Ward 2 candidates. I understand. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. So again, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. It, it's, no, it's no small feat um, to let alone get chosen. I mean, the situation for, we experienced this with the last council where our mayor left and, and I had stepped into the mayor's position um, and we had to fill the councillor seat. And we kind of went through the same process, but it was only one councillor, right? So it's, it's uh, 
it's not easy for three of us to sit here and, and, and pick two councillors to carry us through to the next election. Um, no, I just want to thank you all. It takes a lot of heart. And, uh, don't, don't let it deter you from running for municipal office again. Because it's, 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 a, it's a learning experience like none other. I truly believe more individuals should pursue the seat of office. Uh, no matter if it's for one term. Um, it can be re very rewarding and very challenging. But I think you'd very much appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. I don't know if anybody is here. And, and my apologies. I said that to Stefan. He was here and he, he didn't know the council, but didn't know their names. And I take it, I take for granted sometimes that everybody knows somebody. I don't know any other than Jordan. That's yeah, it. so I'm, I'm not, sorry, I'm so sorry. Mayor Keller, this is Councillor Kelton. Okay. okay. And Councillor Rutledge. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Sorry about that. I didn't know anybody. So no, I'm, like... <laughs> no, that, that was very short sighted of me. I will really admit to that. And... I just wanted to get yeah. names and faces because Absolutely. I didn't know anybody. So, yeah. no, no. Thank you. Understood. Understood. So, okay. And the nomination period opens May 1st. Yeah, for those that are interested. For those that are interested for this yeah. fall's election. Okay, so. Um, so, yeah, I guess basically we just have to pass a resolution. Do you need a little bit of a break to prepare this? After the resolution. After the resolution. So, basically, we just passed a couple of resolutions. Um, for those that were, were picked, will have to stay to sign their open office. The rest can leave if they wish, and they can stay till the end. We'll leave that to you. If you wish to see the, the, the proceedings, you may stay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? My ride. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank so the resolution says that council for the corporation project Bruno Lind Dr. Ragnan hereby adopts bylaw 2022 13 the electric office of councillor board two. Okay, then we'll move oh, on. Uh, so, any move around that? Councillor? I will move. Councillor Kappa. Seconder? Seconder. Councillor Rutledge. Any questions? If not, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Oh, okay. Yes. Carried. Okay, so the second resolution. The, the Council for the Corporation Touch of Bruno Lindock Ragland hereby adopts bylaw 2214 Lima to appoint an elected to the office council of order two. I need a move around that. Councillor I will move. Council Seconder. Seconded. Councillor Rutledge. Uh, questions, Benny? None. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Okay, and that's very okay. So basically we're going to take a brief recess now while Tammy prepares the bylaws. I got to sit down here for the party over there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I sit up all day now. It's a machine. So I don't know how people. Hey, wait. It's still alive. <laughs> it's something to get used to. And. Well, some people started thinking about the apple syrup. 
This one the north side, so it tends to be a little, a little bit, yeah. But I talked to some people. He's he's up there you know, him and Vernon are happening up there. I'm waving it there because I should wave in the second. So yeah, of course, right now we'll do uh, the, uh, the applicant's declaration of office. Yes, please, Valerie. Hi, Valerie. On having been elected or appointed, been appointed to the Office of Councilor Ward 2 in the municipality of the Township of Brunel, Lindock, and Ragland, to solemnly promise and declare that I will truly, faithfully, and impartially exercise this office to the best of my knowledge and ability. I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or promise thereof. For the exercise of this office in a biased, corrupt, or any improper manner. I will disclose any pecuniary interest, direct or indirect, in accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And I make this solemn promise and declaration conscientiously, believing it to be true, but knowing that it is, the, is of the same force and effect as it may under oath. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the same for you, Wayne. Okay, I, Wayne Banks, have been elected or appointed to the Office of Council in the municipality of Brunel, Lindock, and Raven. I do solemnly promise and declare that. I will truly, faithfully, and partially exercise this office to the best of my knowledge and ability. I have not received and will not receive any payment or reward or reward of promise thereof for the exercise of this office in a biased, corrupt, or any improper manner. I will disclose any pecuniary. How do you pronounce that? Pecuniary. Culinary interest, direct or indirect, in accordance with the Municipality Conflict of Interest Act. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II. And I make this solemn promise and declaration uh, I get, uh, conscientiously believe that it is true and not, and knowing that it is of the same force and effect. As if it was made under rule. Okay.
Okay, so welcome to council. Welcome, welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Be prepared to hit the ground running. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay, so uh, I guess we're done then. The only thing we have before us then is the confirmatory bylaw. Uh, resolution 2020-0316, the Council for the Corporation Structure of Juvenile Land Office of Rental here to adopt bylaw 2022-15 and the bylaw for the proceeding with March 16th, 2022 special meeting of the council. Uh, and the Uber on that. Councilor? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a on that? Councilor Young. Seconder? Councilor Banks. Um, any questions, Benny? No. None? All those in favor? Yes. Yes. And that's carried. And now we're down to adjournment. The resolution says that this meeting adjourned at approximately 8 28 uh, p.m. And all I need is a mover on that. Do I need to have a mover? I would move. Councilor Council. This meeting is adjourned.